Welcome back to uh, lecture 12. In this lecture, we are going to discuss uh, affirmative action. Uh, I'm sure you have heard about affirmative action before. Uh, it's, um, well, it's a, I would say it's a quite a complicated matter. Uh, or perhaps I should use the, uh, the term delicate. It's a very delicate matter. The idea of affirmative action is that we all equal. Now, affirmative action originated uh, around the, uh, the 60s. There, there, there are um, notions of affirmative action already in the 1920s and 30s in the United States. But the proper uh, way that it was used originally was by, uh, by, by President uh, John F. Kennedy. Uh, it was introduced in, in, in 1961. And um, uh, JFK signed an order um, that was used to fight discrimination. The order uh, instructed federal con contractors uh, to, um, to avoid discrimination um, in, in their hiring, uh, discrimination uh, of race, sex, religion, national origin, and so, and so on. Um, and then later on in 1964, the, uh, the Civil Rights Act extended that to, uh, to include uh, non-governmental entities and to make it illegal for, uh, uh, for, uh, for an, an employer, any employer, federal or non-federal, to, um, to do um, um, to discriminate against uh, people on the basis of the sex, color, gender, and so on. You know, in other words, uh, it, it, for, uh, it, it prohibited anyone from uh, hiring, from doing uh, preferential hiring. What was the, uh, the motivation of this? Well, the motivation was to remedy past injustices. We, uh, I'm sure you all know, the, the uh, history of this country, you know, the, uh, uh, the past injustices. And so um, affirmative action was used originally with that intent. Now, in the paper that I assigned, I think it's a very interesting paper. And not only that, but it's also very, very clear not complicated at all. It's very straightforward. Uh, Louis Poyman was a great philosopher and he wrote many books, many things, and, and he, he was famous for his clarity. Now in this uh, paper, Poyman offers uh, nine arguments against affirmative action. It's a great discussion. If you, uh, if you think that you know everything about that you need to know about uh, affirmative action, or you um, you are for affirmative action. I'm not gonna. I don't want to say that you uh, you're gonna change your mind, but but certainly you're gonna think about it uh, in a deeper deeper way now that you uh, you study Louis Poyman uh, Louis Poyman's uh, answer um, to the uh, the question of affirmative action. So first of all, he distinguishes affirmative action, um, strong versus weak affirmative action. I, um, I know that this is a big slide with a lot of stuff, but I, I did it on purpose. I, I left uh, a lot of the text, so, uh, so I don't need to, uh, to write any uh, transcript of, of this lecture, uh, especially considering that, that the, um, the paper is one is short, the one by Poyman, I'm referring to, and, uh, and, it, and two is very clear. Uh, and so uh, that works as a sort of a transcript of my lecture. And, and then you have the PowerPoint. So anyway, uh, by strong affirmative action, I quote Poyman saying that strong affirmative action is preferential treatment 
on the basis of race, ethnicity, or gender, or, he says, some other morally irrelevant criterion. Um, you let me know what you think, if you agree with this. I tend to agree with this, with the idea that race, ethnicity, gender, sexual preference, and so on, are irrelevant criteria. Now, what I mean by irrelevant criteria is that um, they are morally irrelevant. Morally irre irrelevant cr criteria, uh, I mean, and Poyman means, that um, we, um, when we talk about morality, what is right, what is just, we're not interested in uh, looking uh, at you uh, um, in the face in the sense that I, I don't really care whether you're black or white or, or, or yellow or blue. If something is right, something is just, it is just. If it's wrong for me, a white American to uh, uh, jump the line. It is wrong for you if you uh, come from Mars, if you uh, come from uh, Minnesota, if you come from Africa, or if you come from, uh, it doesn't matter, or whether you, uh, you uh, um, are homosexual or bisexual or a woman or a man or a child. These are all morally irrelevant characteristics, especially when it comes to, uh, for example, hiring, hiring a person. If I um, am looking for an employee, um, I personally think, this is me, Professor Alvaro, I'm saying this to you, I personally think that, that um, whether the uh, if I am interviewing a person, uh, the only thing that I'm that I'm concerned about is that that person uh, is able to do uh, her job or his job well. Now, whether uh, she sleeps with men or uh, women or both, or uh, or or uh, she's tall or blonde, or uh, it, it, those things are morally irrelevant criteria. So. Uh, um, so, uh, uh, strong affirmative action is preferential treatment, uh, um, discriminating in favor of underrepresented groups against overrepresented groups, aiming at roughly equal results. Now, strong affirmative action is, according to, uh, to Poyman, it is a form of discrimination, and therefore it is immoral. What kind of discrimination? It is a form of re reverse discrimination. It's, it's, a, it's a form of discrimination on the other side of the spectrum. Just like people discriminate against, uh, uh, say, homosexuals or people of color. Well, the proponents of affirmative action also discriminate against uh, um, the majority, and it's not right. Whether it's minority or majority is not right, according to Poyman. So uh, firm, strong affirmative action says it is right to do wrong, to correct a wrong. That's essentially what it says. It is the policy, unfortunately, it is the policy that is currently being promoted under the name of affirmative action. So right now in the United States, when we, when we say affirmative action, when you hear affirmative action, what they really mean is strong affirmative action, which is, again, the policy of preferential hiring. Hiring who? Hiring uh, individuals that are underrepresented. Okay? And this sounds good, but as you will see, it's not good because it's a form of discrimination. Um, he, uh, Poyman, uh, points out that he will not argue for or against the principle of weak affirmative action, which is something different, which is essentially the, uh, the form of affirmative action 
that was started by um, JFK. Indeed, I think it has some weight, moral weight. Strong affirmative action has none. What is weak affirmative action? Well, by weak affirmative action, it is meant policies that will increase the opportunities of disadvantaged people to attain social goods and offices. It includes the dismantling of segregated institutions, widespread advertisement. So and as you can see, what Poyman is um, making the distinction, which is very important, um, although he doesn't say this in, the, in his essay, he, uh, he implies this, that weak affirmative action is the original idea of affirmative action. You, uh, you have a country that has deep, deep historical problems in, uh, in the way of discrimination and injustices, okay? With slavery and uh, the subjugation of women. And so uh, uh, Jean Crow laws, as you know, if you don't know where they are, I don't know where you're living. And, um, and so uh, what are we going to do about it? So JFK wanted to address that kind of discrimination, segregation, uh, institutions that, that are filthy because they, they are, um, by, by the way, they're going against, they're going against the, uh, um, the government because the government, um, once uh, slavery was uh, discontinued, uh, starting uh, then, uh, all people were equal, uh, and um, and so it's not the government. It doesn't start from the government. It starts from the specific individuals and institutions that were uh, <clears throat> were promoting and perpetrating uh, uh, discrimination and segregation. So what do we do as a government? As a government, we have to make sure that this kind of discrimination and injustices do not continue. And so uh, what are we going to do? Well, we have to uh, make sure that all people, uh, regardless of their race, gender, and so on, are entitled to uh, um, asking, uh, uh, taking a loan from a bank. They are entitled to uh, buying a house, buying an apartment, uh, going to school, applying for jobs, not having to uh, to deal with uh, uh, a job interview where they ask you whether you are uh, pregnant, um, what do you do in your, in your free time, to whom you are uh, you sleep, um, um, or with, with whom you sleep at night, um, and your sexual preferences, and, and questions, very personal questions that have no bearing uh, whatsoever on, on your uh, uh, capacity and abilities to to, uh, to do certain jobs. Okay, so um, so a weak affirmative action is a way uh, is a way of promoting promoting uh, uh, opportunities for uh, for those people who uh, don't have the same opportunities. For example, you uh, 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 if you um, are poor and you don't have access to a computer. Well, then the government has to work uh, toward building institutions and opportunities for you to, uh, to be able to uh, access the internet and, and um, uh, uh, fill out a uh, job application and, and, and many uh, of these uh, opportunities, essentially. You have to open uh, um, the um, doors and, and, and work on a, on a level playing field, as they say. That's weak affirmative action. But that's not the affirmative action that is currently used uh, um, and implemented in the United States. The one that is currently in use is strong affirmative action, okay? Which, in other words, in, in short, it, it is the preferential hiring of the minority individuals. 
let's go over the uh, a critique of affirmative action. Um, well, more precisely, a critique of arguments uh, that, that are typically used in favor of affirmative action. One of the, uh, the first arguments is that we need uh, affirmative action, or in other words, we need a strong affirmative action. We need to uh, hire, um, to conduct preferential hiring. So we need to hire uh, diversity because we all need role models. It helps with our, with our self-esteem and it, it helps people uh, with their success in life. Uh, I'm sure you, you heard that the, uh, the idea um, before. Um, if I, I'm, for example, I'm from India. If I, if I don't see any Indian professors in my, in my college, then what am I going to do? I need a role model. I, I need a person who looks like me. Uh, and just like when they, when they elected Obama, then people said, uh, it's about time that they elected a, a black president because um, black people uh, can be inspired and see someone who uh, looks like them. Now, what does a appointment say about this argument? How does he respond to this argument? He responds as follows. He says, first of all, it's not clear that role models, uh, role models in a sense, people who look exactly like us. So if I'm a woman, I need a woman who looks, looks like me, uh, who's like me, a woman who uh, in that particular place, um, or uh, if I'm white, I need a white person. If I'm Chinese, I want a Chinese person. So it's not clear that role models like these, uh, people who look like us, individuals who look like us, are necessary or even sufficient for success. Uh, it doesn't seem that there is any scientific psychological research that says, that, 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 says, that proves that, that when uh, students, for example, or employees, when they have role models in management, role models uh, uh, as professors, they actually do better. One piece of uh, evidence on, uh, to the contrary, uh, Poyman offers, is that when he was growing up, his hero, one of his heroes was Gandhi, who was an Indian, uh, and another one was uh, Martin Luther King. They didn't look like him, but um, they were enough to inspire him. So the more important thing in life to be inspired is not having people who look like us, but rather having people who succeed. Um, he, uh, Poyman, um, you, you tell me if you're convinced by this argument. Poyman says, points out, our common humanity, the fact that these are human beings like me, that's enough. Uh, all I can, not all I can, but I, I can uh, look up to uh, people who don't necessarily look like me. Doesn't matter. I can always say, that's a human being. That's the way we should reason, rather than saying, oh, I want a, a Chinese person who, who looks like me because I'm from China. Why don't we celebrate humanity rather than uh, 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 continue to uh, break down individuals into uh, different races, different uh, ethnic groups, and so on. So role models just like us is... This is the, the problem, the main problem that Poyman sees in uh, hiring people who look like, like us, models, role models that, uh, that look like us. Um, he says it is when you hire people who look like you just because they look like you, essentially you are treating them like objects. You're not treating them like individuals. Imagine this. You... Um, you apply for a job 
and there are 300 applicants. Finally, they call you and they say, hey, Patrick or uh, Julie, you made the cut. You are the one, you won the race and you're gonna be hired. It's wonderful, you, it's gonna be awesome, right? But then uh, a week into your, your new job, your, your boss spills the bean and reveals to you that, that you were hired just because you are Indian and you look Indian. So uh, the, the argument goes according to Poyman. What do you think you're gonna think you're gonna say? Are you gonna be happy? Aren't you gonna think, well, wait a minute, they wanted me just because I look Indian and from India? What if they told you, oh, we don't give a crap about your, uh, your aptitude, your skills. You look like, you look Indian. That's why we hired you. So you see, it's like treating people like objects. I don't want you for your skills. I want you because of the way you look like, or uh, the, um, the reason, uh, uh, or because you sleep with uh, whatever, man or women, or both. That's irrelevant and it's insulting to a person. You have to hire me for who I am. Um, I mean, who I am in a sense, you have to hire me for my skills because I'm, I'm good at, for example, teaching or I'm good at uh, repairing uh, bicycles, not because I'm from Cuba or some other, or because I'm a man or because I'm blonde those are morally irrelevant characteristics. Um, secondly, another problem is this. When you do preferential hiring, you say, we need a person. We need an employee. And uh, there are several well-qualified individuals. But that's not, the way it works nowadays is that, um, for example, universities say, uh, the administration says, we need to hire a professor. Um, and um, there are, say, five, 600 applicants. The administration says, I don't care how good they are. I want, for this position, I want uh, a, a, um, a Chinese woman for the job. Find it. So um, they are going to hire a Chinese woman. Now, if she is well qualified, all well and good. But if she's not qualified, the administration is going to say, I don't care because I want a woman. And that's what I want. Okay. Problem is that um, hiring this way, you, uh, you run the risk. And in fact, uh, that's very usual that, that you hire uh, individuals who are not well qualified. They are inferior to, uh, to other uh, candidates. So uh, uh, this attitude um, led to, uh, it, I mean, it's leading. It's leading to constantly to uh, wondering whether a person, and th this is one of the problems that preferential hiring creates, is that person sitting there because she was good or because of affirmative action. So it creates even more problems in the election. It creates a stigma of undeservedness, whether or not it is deserved. Um, and finally, final point is that is a thought experiment, very uh, cute thought experiment. So Poyman imagines, um, uh, wants you to, uh, to imagine that uh, tall, handsome white males make the best role models for most people. Suppose that psychologically, for some reason, whether you're Indian, whether you're a woman or man or gay, uh, if you uh, see a, um, 
a wide, a tall, handsome, wide male at, at that position that will inspire you and you, um, you'll do better. That's the best role model for any, anyone, for everyone, okay? Uh, now, would it be justified? Will we be justified in hiring tall, handsome, white males over, say, uh, better qualified, short Hispanic women? And it, this thought experiment is very powerful and it's very straightforward because you um, intuitively, uh, uh, plausibly, you say, no, it's not right. Why would it be right? We, uh, we want qualified people. We don't want wide or tall, short. We want qualified people, period. But unfortunately, once again, strong affirmative action, the, the kind of affirmative action that is implemented nowadays in society, in the American society, is strong affirmative action and it works this way. It is not the qualification, it is not the skills, it is who you are, what do you look like, uh, is the um, preferential hiring of minorities. Okay, the second uh, argument is the, uh, the compensation argument. And this essentially, it's an argument that says, um, for example, black people have been seriously, seriously uh, uh, discriminated against and wronged, morally wronged uh, by, by white people in this country. Consequently, we, um, we are in a position to, um, uh, to demand compensation from white people. Or in other words, in plain words, you white people have to pay for this, okay? You have to pay for the, uh, the injustice and the, the, uh, the wrongness. Um, and uh, how are we going to pay? By, uh, by um, suffering reverse discrimination. Is that right? That doesn't sound right, does it? Um, well, for one thing, it is a distortion of compensation. Compensation doesn't work that way. Uh, when we talk about compensation, normally we, we think of, you broke my, my vase, now you pay it. Now you pay, um, you pay it back, you give me the money back. Uh, or, uh, for example, I, I steal your car and use it to make business profits. Now, um, let's say that you, uh, you needed that car because you are a taxi driver. Now, uh, it, it, it's not only proper that, that I give you uh, back the car, but also I have to uh, pay you back the, uh, the, the, the lost uh, uh, wages. And, um, and so I have to pay the damages to you because I've done something to you. Now, it's true that sometimes compensation is extended to uh, uh, large groups, like for example, West German um, has paid, uh, Germ I should say Germany, has paid uh, uh, reparations um, to survivors of Nazi concentration camps. Uh, there are many other examples Actually, let me correct this right now before um, Germany, okay, has paid a um, reparation to uh, um, to the Jews, okay. Um, but we have specific people, okay. We can quantify the the, the wrongness somehow. And uh, we have specific people as recipients of the, um, uh, the compensation. On the other hand, when it, talk, when it comes to uh, uh, repairing and compensating, for example, blacks, well, first of all, it, it doesn't really um, um, 
fit fit the the the, uh, the pattern. It's not the same. Um, you can say, for example, the southern states with uh, uh, Jim Crow laws could be accused of it unjustly harming blacks, but it is not. It was, as I said before, it was not the government doing that. Um, those are laws that they were then um, uh, were uh, were discontinued. Um, but also, it is not clear that all blacks were harmed, and um, and in what way, and how do you quantify the, the, the harm? Um, and as Poyman points out, it's not it's not even uh, clear whether they were uh, harmed. Uh, um, and discriminated against uh, more than poor whites, for example. Uh, finally, the final point, even if we could come to some kind of a agreement on, uh, on a question of how much uh, and quantify the, the, uh, the damage um, and the harm, it is not clear that most affirmative action are appropriate to restore the situation. Um, is that really the, the payment, reverse discrimination? It's not clear that that's the best way to do it. And by the way, a final point that I want to add, actually, uh, that Poyman doesn't seem to uh, to mention, is the fact that um, it is also um, not clear that if in the past, past generations, they uh, they wronged uh, black people. It's not clear why whites today have anything to do with that, and they have to pay the punishment. It's a little bit like um, um, probably I don't want to get into religion, but it's a little bit like uh, an exaggeration, uh, like the Garden of Eden where uh, Adam ate the fruit of knowledge. And as a result, all humanity is punished. Uh, it seems a bit unjust to uh, to punish me um, three thousand years later that I have nothing to do uh, um, with with anything. It's like they they came to you and they said, um, "You are so and so, right?" Yes, yeah, sure. Well, your ancestor, your uh, Great, 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 great grandfather who lived in uh in the year seventeen twenty two. Uh he stole a a chicken from me. You have to give it back to me. That that would be plain absurd. Now, high level jobs to someone unqualified or only minimally qualified um, have been better qualified um, had not yet uh, I'm sorry what is this point so high level jobs uh, to someone unqualified or only minimally qualified who uh, speculatively might have been better qualified had he not being subject to racial discrimination is not fair. Okay, this is a, a, a highly convoluted sentence, and I'm going to have to change it. Uh, the point is, the point is, the plain and, and very plain point is, uh, it is not right, it is not fair to uh, to give a job to a person who is not highly highly qualified. Okay, uh, it just doesn't seem right, even not uh, discriminated. People themselves, even the, the, the marginalized people themselves, would say, no, this is not right. It's not fair. Um, if John is the star of our college team with a promising professional future, uh, Poyman says, and I accidentally cripple him, John may be due compensation, but not due the sport 
the, the, uh, the spot on, on a football team, right? It, I mean, it doesn't make sense because he's crippled anyway, okay? So he's not going to get the same, uh, um, the same spot, the same role in the team. Compensation is one thing, but not the job. If we can compensate. So um, now three points. Treating people according to their merits respects them as persons. As I said before, you want me for uh, my skills, not for who I am or where I come from. And it's, it's a way of treating people as ends in themselves. Remember from Kant, ends in themselves rather than means to social ends. Society has given people exceptions that if they, uh, uh, exception, expectations, okay? In society, you are, when you are, when you're a child, your parents, your school, everybody tells you, look, if you work hard, you will, you're, you'll get far, right? That's an expectation and that's right. And that is legitimate, and that is good, and that's what makes uh, a country a good one, right? But if we start doing uh, preferential hiring, we are going right against that very principle. We are, we are telling people, don't worry about working hard, because if, if you're born white, uh, if, you were, if you're born in the majority, you screwed anyway. And if you, And guess what? Don't worry about working hard, because if you are... Um, a minority, part of a minority, you don't even need to get a degree because they're going to hire you anyway. So um, we want people to be very qualified, people who are, have important positions, professors, um, doctors, lawyers, and, and so on, professional people. We want these people to be highly qualified. We want them to go to school. You don't want your doc when you go to the doctor's uh, your doctors, you say, um, it hurts here. What do you think it is, doctor? Oh, let me Google it, right? You want a doctor who is serious, who went to school, got a degree, not because he was from whatever country or, or, or he was a minority, but because he studied on the books hard, he did his job, and he became a doctor. Okay. Uh, the third argument is the argument from for a compensation from those innocently benefited from past injustice. Now, young white males are as innocent beneficiaries of unjust discrimination of blacks and women have no grounds for complaint. Okay? So this argument said, look, you're white, you're young, don't even start, don't even complain because um, you uh, you had it all, right? You hear this a lot. Uh, now, they may be uh, innocent of oppressing blacks, okay? Like I said before, um, they have nothing to do with it. Uh, however, the argument goes, they have unjustly benefited from the oppression of indiscrimination. So this argument is kind of an extension from the previous one. The previous one says, well, we have to uh, compensate uh, the minorities, okay? And the counter argument would be, but why are you uh, blaming it on us? We didn't do anything wrong. So the, the, uh, the, the counter counter argument would be, oh yes, fine, you didn't do anything wrong, but look at you now, you are in a privileged position Precisely because there was past injustice, so you are you are enjoying the fruit of past injustice, and it's not right. So we have to uh, do uh, preferential hiring. A um, famous philosopher, uh, Judith Thompson, um, put it this way: Many white males have been di direct beneficiaries of policies which had have downgraded blacks and women. Uh, it might be true. And even those who did not directly benefit had at any rate the advantage 
in a competition which comes on uh, the confidence. So even if you uh, didn't get the jobs, but, it, but even, even, uh, even then, you're still gaining some, uh, some kind of uh, advantage over uh, minorities because you have the confidence in your own um, membership of a certain community. And of one's right being uh, recognized as a matter of course. So, uh, as I said, white males obtain advantages in all kinds of ways because of the, uh, um, the, the, the uh, subjugation of women um, and exploitation of blacks and so on. Now, Poyman points out, look, if A steals B's car, and wrecks it. A has an obligation to compensate B for the stolen car. But A's son, okay, my son, if I, this is the argument that I, that I gave you uh, earlier, right, your great, great, great grandfather uh, stole your car, don't come to me and, and ask me for the car because I, I have nothing to do with that car. And, and, uh, you are you're not even entitled to uh, go into the government and and force them to uh, uh, to make me reimburse you uh, for the stolen car because I have nothing to do with my father or grandfather. Okay, um, just like for example, if your father commits a crime and he disappears or he dies. They're not going to come to you and say, oh, well, we'll take you to jail. Not at all. That would be unjust. So something, sometimes a wrong cannot be compensated. We have to uh, come to uh, the, this, this term uh, whether we like it or not. Uh, it is, I know it, it's, you would say it sucks, but that's, that's what it is. It's just not right to, uh, to make people, other people pay for the injustices committed by their predecessor. Um, this is a very cute thought experiment. He says, uh, my parents have a uh, very expensive growth hormone for me so I can grow taller and succeed in, in basketball. But uh, a neighbor steals my, my growth hormone and gives it to uh, to a kid who will become Michael Jordan okay and he will grow to uh, six six and uh, and become Michael Jordan now do I have a right to the millions of dollars that Jordan made as a professional basketball player just because someone stole uh, my my growth hormone obviously I have no, uh, um, I'm not entitled at all to uh, to even a penny. Okay, uh, perhaps I can go to the neighbor and say, "Look, you stole my my growth hormone," but I can't blame it on on Michael Jordan, and I am not entitled to his money, and he has no moral obligation or legal obligation, for that matter, to uh, share his money. Now suppose that Michael Jordan and and I are in high school together. Do I deserve uh, the uh, the spot in a, in a team? Do I deserve his position? Do you think it, it would be right? It would be just for the the coach to say, uh, "Sorry, Michael, you uh, you have to step down," and uh, here is a uh, uh, Louis. Louis deserves this. And why is that? Well, because they stole uh, uh, his growth hormone that would have been a, um, would have allowed him to be here in that position. So that position uh, is for him. He deserves it. That's absolute nonsense. Okay, absolute nonsense. Um, but now here is where Poyman draws an analogy. If being the lucky beneficiary of wrongdoing does not entail 
that Jordan owes me anything in regards to basketball. So if Michael Jordan succeeded in life because, well, he was just a beneficiary of a wrong, and uh, and it, and despite this, um, I am not entitled to uh, to anything. Okay, then why should it be a reason to engage in preferential hiring in academic positions or in in any other kind of jobs? Because it's the same exact story according to Coleman. See, it's the same situation. It, that's exactly what Judith Thompson is arguing. He's arguing, oh look, you are, I, I understand you didn't do anything, white person, but, but you are the lucky beneficiary of some injustice. Well, but why should I be punished for that? Why should I be pay, penalized for that? It doesn't seem right. Of course, it, it, this doesn't take away the fact that it is wrong that black people or other individuals um, have been wronged in the past. But, but it also doesn't take away that it is wrong to uh, punish me now for that. Um, so uh, if minimal qualifications are not adequate um, in, uh, in basketball, then it doesn't seem that there's any reason to say that minimal qualifications are, are uh, adequate to, uh, to do preferential hiring. All right, the fourth argument is the diversity argument. You need diversity, okay? You need diversity in a, in a hospital, you need diversity in a, in a college, you need a school, anything, because, well, the, the world is better the, the way uh, if we have diversity, right? Um, diversity, for one thing, is uh, uh, forces you to uh, to open your mind, to understand that there are other cultures, there are other people, they think differently, and so uh, that's beautiful to have diversity. Uh, as Poyman points out, diversity expands our moral horizons. Um, however. You want diversity to uh, to expand moral horizons, but to have that to have diversity, just to have diversity, it's pl plain wrong. Um, it is just unfair that you hire just for diversity's sake. Imagine that you are under uh, the uh, the tools of uh, a group of surgeons. What do you care if there's diversity there? You don't care about that. You care that they are the best surgeons around. What are you going to do? Get up and say, no, I'm sorry. The appendix stays there for now until I find a, a diverse group of surgeons. That's again, that's absurd. Diversity uh, could work, Poyman points out, uh, in, in a situation where uh, there is, for example, a, um, a black community that re doesn't respond well with uh, white cops. So uh, a, a black policeman might be, uh, even if less qualified than, than the white policeman, would make sense because he would be able to uh, carry out his duty in a better way than the white policeman. Okay, so there is a, a reason. There's a good reason in a sense. But, by the way, what Poyman doesn't point out is that, yes, this would be a good reason, but, but essentially if this were the, uh, the requirement, uh, that sort of requirement would be, would be specified in the uh, um, in a hiring process, and it would not be illegal or unfair or immoral to do so. It would just be part of the, uh, the job description. 
we need a, a black person. Um, now, no one is going to scream a, a, a bloody gore because uh, what if what if uh, white people uh, try to sue the uh, uh, the police department? The judge would say, "But look, for example, let's say that there's a um, there's an audition for Porgy and Bess. Who are we going to hire? A white man and a white woman? It wouldn't make sense, right?" We have to we have to hire um, uh, black people because that's that's the nature of the uh, the show, uh, and so um, it doesn't it, 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 it that is not a form of discrimination in this case. Okay, number five, the equal result or equal results argument. This is a very um, very interesting. I wish we we had time. Uh, to be in a classroom and talk about this because this is very interesting because some philosophers as well as uh, social scientists anthropologists and sociologists and so on uh, believe that human nature is pretty much the same okay now I know you already you're starting to think yes but we're all the same Fine, we all the same. Um, so we have to uh, we have to uh, eliminate this idea of race. We're all human beings. So in in the first place, let's not even talk about preferential hiring, right? Let's work toward uh, leveling the uh, um, the field, making uh, making it possible for everyone to uh, to have a chance. Let's not even talk about blacks, whites, females, gays, and so on. Um, so, um, since we're all alike, roughly, we are all identical, it, it follows that any inequality, then, well, think about it, if by nature we are roughly identical, then why is there a inequality because it's it's uh, socially uh, made imposed okay inequality it must be that because if you believe that we are all the same intellectually and our skills they're all the same men women and so on then it must be that these inequalities are the results of um, unequal opportunities okay now Portman points out that there are uh, that certain uh, the uh, the individuals who uh, um, are supposed to be the beneficiaries of uh, preferential hiring are the very individuals who score low on uh, on many different tests okay um, and, uh, and of course the argument is we have to look at slavery, racism, segregation, uh, as a result, you go to poor schools, um, you, uh, you, you're mal malnourished and, uh, and, and therefore all these, uh, uh, these events cause people, certain kind of uh, groups to uh, to score lower and not perform as well as the majority um, the privileged okay so unless one assumes that blacks are naturally less able to pass the test you can say that or but no one accepts that okay in an egalitarian uh, country like, like the United States, no one uh, is going to say that some groups, whether it's blacks or uh, whatever, greens or yellows or blues, are um, um, intellectually inferior. Okay? Then if you don't accept that conclusion, then the, the only logical conclusion is that um, the results themselves 
are socially and legally constructed. Um, so what are we going to do with this? Well, first of all, Boyman points out there are innate differences between races, sex, and groups. And we can't deny these differences. For example, if you ever watch the marathon, now, currently, uh, especially last year, last year all kinds of records were broken in track and field. Especially in the marathon, I'm interested because I'm, I used to be a marathoner, but in a marathon, the um, the world record for the marathon uh, for for uh, men is two hours and uh, in one minute and thirty nine seconds. That is <laughs> mind blowing. Now, what is the the record for women? Well, it's it's two hours and fourteen minutes, which is absolutely uh, amazing. Super fast, but it doesn't compare with 201. That's a lot, and uh, it's a big difference. How do you explain a difference? That's no, not a social construct. That difference is a genetic difference, and that's the reason why in the Olympic in the Olympics you you don't put men and women competing uh, against each other. It will be absurd. That's why we divide men and women. Okay. So uh, why should we not then expect such the same differences between racial groups and, and genders? Why should the evidence for, uh, for this be completely discounted? Now, what Poyman is saying here is that, look, we have evidence. We have certain evidence. We have the test scores. We have uh, IQ uh, tests and so on, SATs and so on. What are we going to do with that evidence? We can say, well, it's socially constructed, uh, or we can look at the evidence and make sense of the evidence. Since we don't know for certain whether groups uh, differ in talent, then some people say we should presume that they are equal. But but this is this is absurd because um, if we don't know whether people are the same in talent or they're different, uh, they differ in talent. Why should we even assume that? Why should we assume that they're all the same? If we don't know, then we have to say we don't know. We shouldn't assume they are the same. Okay, But that's what the, uh, uh, the, the supporters of affirmative action is, are, are arguing. They're arguing, we don't know, so guess what? Let's say that we're all equal. That doesn't seem to uh, um, to make sense, logically speaking. Now, suppose he says, Poyman, consider this analogy. Suppose that you were uh, the owner of a National Basketball Association team, and um, they're all blacks, right? Very few whites, maybe one or two. Um, what's the explanation? Similarly, by the way, I once again, I want to go back to the marathon because I don't know anything about basketball, um, but I know about marathoning. In, uh, in the marathon, how many white people do you see uh, first place in the marathon? Not even one. <laughs> Not even one. All the major marathons in the world, Boston, New York City, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Berlin, Tokyo, etc. All the major marathons, Africans win, always. The podium, but I'm not, not only the uh, first place, I'm talking about podium. So uh, top three, but, but you can even extend it to top five, top 10, top 20, they're all black. Um, they're, they're all Africans. What's the reason? Um, it's hard to say well, because, because what? Isn't it true that white people are privileged? So according to this, this argument, according to this line of reasoning, then white people should excel 
in uh, in in um, in the marathon, but they don't. Uh, similarly, what Poyman has pointed out with regard to basketball, um, do you think it would be right? It would be fair for white people to uh, to uh, to sue the uh, um, the basketball team and, um, uh, with the charges of uh, discrimination. Uh, and now, what's going to happen when uh, when the, uh, the the basketball team presents evidence? What are you going to say? Well, this is just socially uh, made up. You see, it wouldn't be legitimate to say that. It would be absurd to say that. Uh, in, in other words, look at the evidence. The evidence shows that uh, blacks are superior to whites when it comes to... Um, when it comes to basketball. And uh, if you ask me, I mean, you don't have to ask me, it is evident, it is a fact that Africans uh, are superior to whites when it comes to uh, uh, marathoning, okay? Not necessarily track and field because white people uh, seem to uh, do better in the shorter distances. But when it comes to marathon and half marathons, very long distances, Africans dominate the world uh, of, uh, of racing, and um, but and if you ask me, one more thing I wanted to say: um, blacks are superior to whites when it comes to jazz. Okay, the best jazz musicians were black. I don't think it's a it's a coincidence or an accident. Is because they're more talented. If you ask me, I might be wrong. But you know, my, my hero when I when I was a kid was John Coltrane, a saxophone player, the best that ever existed, um, unbeatable. He was the best saxophone ever, an inspiration. So the fact that Asians are producing fifty percent of PhDs in in uh, in science and math in this country and blacks less than uh, 1% clearly shows on this reasoning, according to that reasoning, that we, we are providing special secret advantages to Asians. But obviously we're not. The evidence is very clear, right? Um, so what are we gonna do? We should reduce the quota of blacks in the uh, NBA to uh, 12%. Uh, it's just, uh, doesn't make sense. There, there is evidence, and uh, and we have to treat the evidence. Now, people are going to say, "Well, but again, blacks don't have the opportunities." Okay, so then the argument, Poyman, Poyman's argument would be, then that's where uh, uh, the um, weak affirmative action comes in. We have to uh, let's talk about ways to improve the opportunities but not preferential hiring. You don't want preferential hiring because then you would have to uh, hire more white people in the NBA and you would have to, uh, uh, for example, in the marathon, what are you gonna do? You're gonna forbid Africans, uh, East Africans from competing in major marathons. You are, you're gonna have to choose uh, the, um, the, the less talented, but that's gonna change the, the whole, uh, uh, profile of, of sports is that really I don't think that's that's what people want people um, sports fans don't want equality don't want diversity they want the best is going to win that's the point of sports otherwise it will be boring so appointment points out why does society have to enter into a uh, this result game in the first place. Why don't we have to, uh, why do we have to decide whether all differences are environmental or uh, genetic? Why don't we just simply admit that we don't know, okay? And we, uh, we find a way to, uh, to make, uh, to educate people and to give all the opportunities to uh, rise above. All right, number six, no one deserves his talents arguing against meritocracy. 
this is a very bizarre argument, and it's, it's, it's really not a very good argument. And the argument says this. Look, what do you have in life, house, uh, money, success, career? You don't deserve it anyway, okay? It's just a, a, um, a matter of combinations and uh, coincidences and accidents that, that happen in life. Um, just like, for example, you don't deserve your intelligence because it, it's just a, a coincidence. It's a matter of how you were born and you have it. It's not, it, we, we don't say you deserve it. We just say, well, you have it. It's, it's a characteristic. Um, so uh, since you don't deserve these things, it follows according to this argument that um, you have no rights to, uh, to, to say, to claim these, these uh, uh, characteristics. And, and by the same token, you have no rights to um, the, uh, the positions in society that you have. Consequently, it is not unjust to give these uh, positions to less but still qualified somehow uh, blacks and women and in minorities, okay? So, um, well, this is in, in any outline form, the argument, okay? Society may award jobs and positions as it sees fit, as long as individuals have no claim to uh, these positions. To have a claim to something means that one has earned it or deserve it or deserves it. But no one has earned his or her intelligence, his or her talents. You're born with them, okay? You see how bizarre this argument is. So uh, if a person does not deserve his or her uh, skills, um, intelligence, and so on, it follows that better qualified people do not deserve their qualifications because... They just have these qualifications by nature. Consequently, society can say, look, you don't deserve them, so don't complain if I give these positions away to uh, uh, people who don't have your qualifications. This is obviously absurd for, for many reasons. First of all, um, premise four is false. Okay, Just because I do not deserve something. It doesn't mean that I, that you can take it away from me. For example, if, uh, if I was given a uh, $100, okay, and then I invest in these, in this $100, you don't invest, you, um, you put it in a drawer, okay, but after five or 10 years, I, I get $500, it would be uh, it would be absolutely silly to say that I have to give you a, a half of what I earned because I don't deserve it. I didn't deserve it in the first place. So uh, when you apply this to uh, for your life and jobs and, uh, and affirmative action, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever that just because I don't deserve my skills, then uh, the uh, the government is, has the right. To, uh, to give um, a professorship to a person who, uh, who is not qualified at all. He's less qualified than me. All right. Now, the following will be a couple of arguments against affirmative action. So, uh, so far, we have talked about arguments against the typical arguments in favor of affirmative action. Now, Poyman gives some positive arguments against affirmative action. The first of which is that affirmative action uh, requires discrimination against a different group. Remember, we were, we were talking about this in the, uh, in, at the outset of this lecture. Um, weak affirmative action is fine. Strong affirmative action, which is the one implemented by universities and jobs in the United States is not right because it's 
um, a reverse discrimination. Um, very interesting story Poyman shares. Essentially, when, uh, when he was um, already established as a, as a very famous professor and, and scholar, a, um, a friend, a personal friend, applied for a job in a university. And, uh, and so um, Poyman says that he actually, for the first time, because this friend was very, very qualified, he uh, picked up the phone, called the university, and says, what's going on here? My guy is very um, qualified. And, and the response was, of the chair of the search committee, was that, yes, we do know that your guy is actually the most qualified of the bunch but we can't hire him because they want, they want to hire, the administration wants to hire either a woman or a black person or both, a black woman um, or a black man. And, and that's, that's very telling of affirmative action what's happening nowadays. So um, um, I hope for that university they hired a, a at least a minimally qualified person, but to hire uh, a person for the caller once again, think about think about if this person gets hired, how is she or he going to feel if, if she he or she finds out they hired me? They have more qualified people. But of course, I, I know what you're thinking. The person is going to say, "Who cares? I got the job." But morally speaking, okay, to be honest, completely honest, what is this person going to say? Well, it kind of sucks because I thought that they hired me because I was good. But in reality, they hired me because I'm black. That's, that's horrible. Because if they hire you to teach physics in a college, and you discover that you uh, you were hired not because you're good. In fact, they don't think highly of your research or uh, of your teaching skills. But just because you're a woman or a man or black or Chinese, I don't know you. I would feel insulted if they said, oh, "We're hiring. We just hired you because you're Italian." Um, but you hire me because I'm a good philosopher. So, uh, according to Poyman, cases like these, um, in, his, in his experience, are very regular. Um, and um, it seems that now, because of this affirmative action, it seems that now the, uh, the minority, in fact, is becoming the very the the, the the poor white youth, poor white people, are now the um, the ones discriminated against essentially. Now the children of the wealthy don't have problems, right? They just paid Yale. They say, "Give my son a bachelor's degree in what? Well, whatever you want, right?" And they they can pay, but the poor white people, well, they they will always suffer. And affirmative action is just damaging uh, poor white people because they cannot find jobs. So uh, affirmative action simply shifts injustice from blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, Asians, and women against white males, especially poor white males. Um, another point is that affirmative action encourages mediocrity and incompetence. At several universities, the administration has forced departments to hire, as I said, uh, members of minorities, no matter what, irrespective of their, uh, um, of their qualifications. Now, Find another funny story that he shares, Poyman. When he got his PhD in the late 70s, 
he was associated with, uh, with black people and they thought that he was a black philosopher because he uh, had a um, civil rights record and was also uh, um, a black studies major, believe it or not, at university. And so they thought that he was black. And so they, uh, uh, they, um, they offered him this position at a university and, and then later he was rejected because, well, he was not a black person. So Americans are one, uh, wondering why standards in our country are falling and the Japanese and Koreans are getting ahead, for example. Well, affirmative action is the reason, is one of the reasons. Um, sufficiency and diversity is the enemy of excellence, according to uh, Cornell. Um, an, uh, another argument is the argument from the principle of merit. Again, traditionally, we, uh, we have believed that the highest positions in society should be awarded to, uh, uh, to those who are qualified. He uh, mentions the Quran. Uh, the Quran says, a ruler who appoints any man to an office when there is in his do uh, dominion another man better qualified for the job than the first one sins against God and against the state. So it's a double sin. Uh, rewarding excellence both seems just to the individuals in the com competition and makes, uh, makes for efficiency. It's not only ju just for the individual, but it's just towards society because you, you, uh, you don't want to hire people who are not qualified. You are, in a way, you're destroying society. The, uh, the case for meritocracy, according to Poyman, whichever uh, uh, flavor of morality you, um, you embrace, um, it has, according to him, two pillars. One is deontological, that we have to treat people uh, as ends, as valuable, uh, not as means. We shouldn't mistreat people, shouldn't exploit people. The other one is a utilitarian because if you hire qualified people in the long run, um, remember the greatest good for the greatest number. And if you hire people who are qualified for the jobs, then in the long run, uh, the majority will be benefited. So the conclusion is our goal is justice for all. We should embrace this principle. The question is, how best to get there? Weak affirmative action is okay, typically, but the problem is that it, it easily slides down into strong affirmative action. Okay, uh, what I mean is this: you have a university, you need it to hire people. Uh, you can't find any um, qualified, um, say, women. And so far, the college has hired male professors. How boring is it to have a university with all male professors and say why male professors, right? Um, the administration says, come on, let's hire some women, some men, so let's diversify it. They say, I'm sorry, we can't find anyone qualified. Then that's when weak affirmative action slides into strong affirmative action. You say, okay, fine. Um, to, uh, this is an extreme situation and it requires an extreme uh, right, um, solution, which is we have to do preferential hiring, no matter what. So affirmative action aims at the higher level of society universities and skilled jobs and so on but if we want to improve our society not only people giving people what they deserve but if we want to improve the society 
the best way to do it is to concentrate again as I said earlier on families uh, children educate children better better education you ask me better food because in uh, in public schools <clears throat> what they feed children is frightening they give them milk chocolate milk string cheese cheeseburgers and zero fruit maybe they give them an apple not even organic is sprayed with pesticide that is not no way to treat children that's child abuse to uh, in my opinion to give meat and animal products to children it's plain child abuse um, let's concentrate let's focus on on people on children raise them well expose them to our culture um, not spending time on a stoop playing uh, dice with uh, their friends or smoking marijuana let's concentrate on how to educate people rather than um, implementing uh, preferential hiring Martin Luther King so he ends his paper by saying that Martin Luther King um, said that humanity is like a man mounting a horse who always tends to uh, to fall on the other side of the horse and this seems to be the case with affirmative action according to to point out it's a very good uh, way of, uh, of explaining affirmative action because attempting to redress discrimination to fix discrimination and the um, and the wrong that is done that has been done in new forms of discrimination is just the same as trying to mount a horse and then fall into the other side of the horse and this is not gonna fix the issue Okay, so uh, we uh, um, ended the, this long conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope I hear a lot of comments on, because uh, I'm very interested in what you have to say about affirmative action. This is just an argument. Uh, it's an argument proposed by the employment. It seems to me you, uh, you probably uh, would agree that that is a very, very powerful argument but I want to hear what you think. So uh, I'll see you um, for next uh, lecture, lecture number 13. Until then, have a great day. Thank you.